Hey, everybody, it's Pete Carmasino here at Shake and Analytics. This is the halftime show here on Stock Charts TV each and every Monday. I'm just going to go over what's happening here in the markets and just a brief overview. But we've got a kind of a laundry list that we go through on a weekly basis. So I change it up a little bit. So today I'll be looking at uh, obviously my, my bullish percent uh, chart that I basically look at um, the number of rallies we've had on a weekly basis, which we at this point are at the sixth rally that we've been counting. Uh, I'm going to look at the U.S. dollar. I'm going to look at uh, oil. Uh, I'm going to look at WTI crude, that is U.S. 10-year treasury and a multitude of other things. But the highlight today will be two uh, areas of focus. One is going to be the relative strength breakdowns. Okay, yeah, that's right, breakdowns that we're seeing. And so when you see breakdowns in this kind of market, you want to pay really special attention to those because if we've got a bullish sentiment and things are moving in the, in the right direction for us, if we're on the long side, uh, any names that are kind of breaking down in the middle of that are probably pretty weak. And so we want to make sure that we call out those uh, specific ones that are just changing trend or have changed trend in the last several weeks or months and just kind of pay attention to those go going forward. And the last one I'm going to look at is Uber. Uh, a lot of talk about, you know, bullish talk about Uber. And we're going to show you where the power gauge and the relative strength kind of changed early on on this and uh, you know, gave it a better preview, I think, of an opportunity that could have been taken advantage of in there. So um, today we're looking at mixed markets. I mean, obviously uh, on the tape here, we've got uh, a pretty uh, mixed bag where you're seeing the S&P and NASDAQ on the downside, you're seeing the Dow catch a, a small bid here, but nothing significant either way. And I don't want to call it a dull day, but it's really not that exciting. And sometimes that's a good thing. Um, we, don't, we don't want to see crazy volatility every day of the week, uh, but not a lot going on. Um, you know, this particular week in general, but I'm anxious to look at some of the charts that we just called out here, uh, here in the beginning of the video and kind of dive a little bit deeper into uh, some thematic trends we're looking at. And one of those, I'm just looking at two different ways to kind of view the market, looking, looking from the defensive sectors, all three, which I typically, you know, we, we call out and everyone has really identified these as defensive sectors, which are you know, your healthcare, your utilities, and consumer staples, those three sectors. And I kind of look at the ratios. What I'm going to do on the other side is look at the offense uh, uh, side of the, of the equation. But I'm going to choose you know, technology, obviously, XLK, XLC communications, and discretionary, right? And so we'll look at those three versus the defensive side, kind of see what the picture, the bigger picture is drawing. And so let's dive into these charts and see what we see. All right, folks, we're back here uh, on the ACP platform, and I've been drawing this for a while, and I like to just keep going over it because it's just something that um, kind of keeps my head uh, sort of straight and kind of uh, we understand exactly what's happening here, and we're not missing anything. And so we had this level as resistance. It was kind of a little higher. It kind of moved. That resistance changed over the, over the course of uh, a year or two, and it was really around that 4,200 mark. You can see right around that 4,196 it started to roll over. Um, and obviously, that's on a weekly basis. Make sure you understand this chart. It's a weekly chart. We look at rallies from the bottom uh, move up to the recent highs, and those have to be at least 5% that could be considered a rally. We've had about six of them on a weekly basis, this last one being the biggest and sort of the longest, really, if you look at that. We're looking at bullish percent on the New York composite. Uh, it's kind of been still in a negative downtrend. It's been now like this now for almost two years. And same thing on the composite and same thing on the S&P. Um, it's just been trending lower. Now, it's not significant. You can see that, you know, the peaks and valleys here have gotten better over time, but then they've gotten weaker as well. So uh, definitely a mixed bag. We've seen the top stocks leading the markets here. We understand that. We got to comprehend it, but we also have to look at the overall indexes as well. And so what I'm just seeing here is sort, sort of more of the same um, trending higher on the indexes, uh, doing our best not to capitulate either up or down smoothly, I would say even orderly in some cases, but at the same time, something that um, we've just got to be kind of cognizant that things could change and, and continue to be volatile. We got to be, you know, we got to be concerned about that. This is a chart on the dollar we talked about. Um, you know, I, I had these gray boxes drawn and I just had, this was an area, right? These weren't meant to be support or resistance. This was just a time frame of anticipated rate increases, what, it, what that did to the dollar kind of peaked here and then the anticipated rate easing, which has now really been uh, for quite some time. I could actually extend this all the way out to here and I, I probably do that on, on the next video. But looking at the Fed, this is the Fed rate, the overnight uh, financing rate, 
and this is the correlation between the two. And you can see where at that particular time when rates were um, already up at a high level and really continued higher, you can't say they didn't, right? They actually did, but the anticipation and the velocity of change was slowing. And that's what brought the dollar down. Now you're seeing a lot of other foreign countries now uh, raise their rates and that's gonna have an effect on the dollar as well. So there will be a tug of war back and forth here. Uh, something to be cognizant of, obviously the $100 uh, level here, the par level, so to speak of the dollar um, is something you wanna keep an eye on, but it rarely um, kind of deviates from this, but this has been pretty steady here. I mean, which is maybe why we've seen a pretty nice uptick here in 2023 in the markets, because when you've got a stable dollar, you know, you can obviously make better business decisions internationally and even domestically as well. Um, let's jump over to crude. This is the one, you know, I had, I have dubbed the uh, White House buy zone, right? This is where they said, uh, they announced it on October 18th. You can go back and look at the White House, whitehouse.gov, uh, announced the buy zone between 67 and 72 or lower, right? They, they threw the or lower in as any good trader would do. This is obviously, if you like it at 67, you're going to love it at 60 or 65, whatever the number is, but it seems to be holding and we are testing that low level right now. I don't know if it's going to break down here, but you know, all, we, all we're seeing is maybe potentially higher demand, uh, but just not seeing the prices reflect that. It's very, very strange. I'm not an oil expert, that's for sure. I'm looking at the chart. I'm just kind of calling out what I see here. But at the same time, it's kind of, odd, you know, odd behavior, but yet <laughs> it's, it, is, it is behaving, right? And then that you see that level holding a lot. Um, so we'll just kind of watch that as we go. Let's look at the new ticker symbols for the Invesco's uh, consumer discretionary on the equal weighted basis and their consumer staples on an equal weighted basis. So it's RSPD versus RSPS. Now, I'm not, you know, just calling this trend out. I kind of noticed something here. You're seeing lower highs, seeing those again. There's that area that looked like it really held um, as the last level of support. I'm not seeing any major changes here. This is the US dollar down here. You know, I'm focused on that. Um, I'm trying to find some correlations there. I don't see anything directly right now, but at the same time, I do see a lower high forming. And let's just see what happens here. If this can hold support, maybe this could be an area to test. Maybe it's the moving average. Not exactly sure at this particular point, but I thought it was interesting that we did have uh, a lower high here and we're starting to roll over uh, from leaving discretionaries and moving into staples there. Just something to be aware of. One thing I did see was um, XLF, the financials, starting to break down here on the individual sector basis, that ETF, XLF. And obviously, uh, there's no discrepancy here. This has been a breakdown. We know why. This is where all those banking issues were in the, between March and April. Uh, and things just kind of exacerbated and got worse there. But when you look at it relative to the SPY, there's no doubt where the trend is. It's negative. So let's take a look at um, these areas we're talking about. We're going to look at our three defensive sectors first. And I had this uh, line here, this um, you know vertical line, all dated around January 10th, and that was really when all of these indexes, which which are really indexes, they are they're really ratio charts. They're the defensive sectors versus the spy on three different panels. The first one is obviously XLV. If you can't see that, you can see it up here. It's healthcare. The second one is sta consumer staples, and the third one is utilities down here at the bottom, and they all kind of, you know, kind of followed suit around the same exact day, which is kind of interesting in a way. Um, but you started to see this breakdown. Now, we've been looking at this and saying, okay, things are starting to perk up just a little bit here on the staples and certainly on healthcare, right, uh, recently, but utilities are struggling. Let's look at the, the other side of the fence here. Let's look at uh, the offensive team and see what's happening here. Are they struggling? Are they putting in tops? Well, XLK is the first one up top here, also formed with double top, but you can't argue with technology. It's been leading and still continues to lead. Just be careful when you start to see trend changes. Now here, uh, we've got the second one here is discretionary XLY versus the SPY. And you don't really see, what I see here is really a higher high there, but you haven't seen the change, right? You haven't seen the strength of that ratio uh, where the 50 day was able to move above the 200 day um, where the other two were clear and early on really in March, but they really bottomed when defensives topped when defensives rolled over it was around that same week, January 5th to the 10th, roughly. 
and you started to see these start to perk up. Now, um, I just like to look at both sides of the coin. I don't want to be um, calling anything until we see something material develop here, but these are kind of rolling over slightly and you can see even XLC, the communications one had rolled over, really stopped gaining ground uh, back at the beginning of June. It's been sliding lower where XLK has been back and forth a little bit. Obviously, we know the top five or seven names that are leading the group, really leading the markets in every which way um, that you can look at this market. So I just wanted to call it out and make sure that we're paying attention to both sides, right? The offense and the defense. And the defense obviously clearly broke down in January where offense started to break out around the same time. Look at that 50-day breakout here. We're all around that same time. And so there was a clear rotation out of uh, – out of the defensive sectors into the growth sectors. All right, that takes us here to the Chaikin system. Uh, we typically go over this every week, and I like these uh, lists. It seems to be uh, very uh, helpful to folks, and we've got an incredible amount of uh, positive feedback on this particular thing. So I'm going to continue with it. I, I like the theme and kind of looking at different parts of the way our system is working. And so we have signals. These are relative strength stocks, or stocks that have changed relative strength, I should say. Um, and it says it right down there in the description, you can see a relative strength breakdown signal activity today, right? So this was updated over the weekend. I'll close this and so I can expand the chart. And there's the list. You can see just a few names here, right? Not, not a, a large amount. I don't have any filters on for size or market cap or anything like that. But CSIQ is a neutral plus stock, which is really looking strong, right? When you look at the power gauge. Well, what's happened is it's broken down below the long-term average, and that's the automation, right, of the algorithm. Once it breaks down, obviously price is really determining factor here. If it breaks below that long-term trend, we like to alert folks to say, hey, look, this isn't looking great. Now, you're looking, looking here on the relative strength. It's happened a few times. It's broken down a few times and held. It's been pretty much sideways, but that's just one that's changed. This one, Las Vegas Sands, I think looks more compelling only because it's had such an incredible run up, right? From around, you know, 35 to almost doubling to as high as 65 or so. And now we're starting to see some struggle here, right? This is moving up, you know, above and below the uh, long-term trend. We have a relative strength breakdown signal today and the relative strength really started to break down back uh, just at the end of May, beginning of June, you can see that really kind of not really anything telling us here on the chicken money flow, not good or bad, but I would think the lack of it is more bad than good. And obviously you're seeing the trend start to break down. So that's just one where the industry is strong, but this particular player is showing signs of weakness on the field. And so, you know, maybe it's something that you want to either use to protect. I'm not calling this out as a trade or anything. I'm just saying that's changing trend and there's no denying it on our system. So looking at uh, Nelnet, which is, you know, an interesting loan servicing uh, technology type company, they do a lot of different things, but also in a negative relative strength change, but it's been really fighting that, tra that trend change, even though, even though we're seeing the breakdown today, uh, we do have a neutral rating on the stock and you can just see it's kind of hovering around this particular long-term average. So not as clear cut as Las Vegas Sands, but I wanted to call it out uh, nonetheless. And then one of the other ones is a company called Frontline Oil and Gas Consumables. Really seeing that trend change. And obviously we've got a sell and a breakdown. We have two relative strength notifications on this. Heavy negative money flow, we're overbought. It's below the long-term trend, weak stock and a weak group. Something to pay attention to. All right, folks. And as promised, uh, we were going to talk about Uber. And I'm just bringing it up. I saw it on you know one of the... Uh, TV shows today that talk about stocks and a lot of folks are talking about Uber. And I thought, let me just take a look and see what we've got here on Uber. And obviously we are bullish on the name. Uh, if I open up the power gauge, you can see a lot of the uh, factors and sections of our, of our power gauge are bullish or better. The only one that's not is financials, which is ironic, obviously, but price to book is kind of weak. So is price to sales uh, and everything else. It, what's really looking best here is return on equity. But I would assume that if anything here can improve in that financial sector, obviously, or section, I should say, um, it might just get the improvement on the stock as well. But it's been a weird stock. It's been back and forth. Relative strength was changing, but it was still neutral and neutral negative. Going back to bearish, money flow is negative. So almost for about a year, back and forth, really sideways action. But 
when it started to break out, there was no doubt that we had huge money flow coming in and we saw uh, the relative strength change. And then what happened was it flipped to bullish, got a little neutral there and then bullish again. So what happens is, you know, our power gauge is updating and taking the information week to week and overnight based off of price. And so when things get updated or estimates change or whatever the case may be, um, that gets factored into the power gauge as well. But you do have a strong stock and a strong group. It's very interesting. You look at a five-year, I don't know if you remember where Uber was trading, but it wasn't trading that much higher. It was about 62 or, and change, but that would still be you know about a 40 to 50% move higher from these levels of about 44. So interesting to take a look at Uber here where the uh, power gauge and the relative strength and the money flow were all kind of confirming a change in trend and certainly it was an opportunity when you saw all three. Okay, everybody, that's all we have here for today's halftime show. I'm Pete Carmesino, Chief Market Strategist here at Chaken Analytics. You can follow me on Twitter at Pete Carmesino. On Twitter, you can check out some of the things I put out time to time, put out some nice notes that you might be interested in. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.